Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's fireside chat on sites, locations, personnel, and contract management. Our presenters for today's webinar are Harsha Marcher, one of our product managers, and Yasha, one of our senior product managers. But we do have other folks on the team here, which include our CEO and CFO, Artie and Kanal Vaishnav, and Kanthi Supriya, who is our one of our product managers as well. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please add your questions in the questions box. If you have um, a question you'd like to voice out to the entire team, feel free to raise your hand and we'll go ahead and unmute you. Uh, we will be pausing periodically to ensure your questions are answered. As usual, feel free to download today's presentation to follow along or keep as a reference. You can find that in the handout section. This webinar will be recorded and shared with you via email one hour after the webinar ends and will also be made available on our YouTube channel. And we're going to give folks just a couple of more minutes to get their audio sorted and get logged into the webinar. We'll be back with you in just a few moments. All right, and before we go ahead and start with today's presentation, I do believe Artie uh, had a, a quick message for us regarding this um, fireside chat. So Artie, if you are ready to go, you can take it away. Hello. Hi. I'm um, sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. All right, so uh, welcome everyone to this discussion. The whole idea with fireside chats is for us to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or uh, a group conversation about how you want us to develop some of these features in the product and for us to try and understand what are the real world needs and scenarios that you are dealing with on your end. So location movement has, over the last few months been one of the big tickets that, I mean, a lot of tickets around this topic where schools want to move a location from one site to the other. So Yash and Harsha are going to present um, the, the way the site and location is set up in the product, why we decided to do what we did and um, why moving a location today is a little tricky and um, they will present ideas about what we want to do. And we want to hear from all of you as to what options look better, what other uh, things we need to consider, et cetera. And then we'll also go over certain topics of the contract management. We have made some big changes in the way the contract management works in PRISM. And we wanted to get your ideas on whether you think that works, whether you think we have to accommodate for some additional features, functionality, et cetera. So um, over to you, Harsha. Let's get started with the first topic, site location and personal movement. Thanks, Aarti. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, as Aarti already talked about, uh, we're gonna discuss two things today. One is around location movement across uh, different sites and the other one is contract management, right? So to starting on the first one, um, in the recent past, I think we have seen um, a quite a lot of requests uh, where uh, a location has been asked to move, to move to a different site or multiple locations have been asked to move to a multiple, uh, I mean, to a different site or two or more sites coming together to, to form a brand new um, site, right? So it can be due to a couple of reasons. One is the increasing m &A activity in the healthcare industry, uh, probably post COVID period, uh, a, a lot of small things being acquired by the big ones uh, or this industry is uh, having, uh, getting more interest from the PE firm so that a lot of these acquisitions or mergers are happening, right? So again, as I said earlier, like there could be use cases where a single or a multiple locations, you want to move to another site or a bigger site acquires another smaller one with all its style locations, or it can be like two or more sites coming together and operate as one big entity, right? So these are some of the leading uh, use cases. And it, it, it also may happen that when you are setting up the location and site data in the system, uh, it might uh, wrongly update it during the migration or when we onboard. Or it, it also happened that when user enters a location or a site, they might enter it in a wrong site or uh, a location, right? So all these uh, use cases or all these scenarios are uh, making us to move a location uh, from one parent site to another. And in the system, we do not have a very streamlined approach or an easy option to move a location to a different site, right? So that's what gonna we, we will discuss. Okay, now one of the thing is like uh, 
why the location movement is very difficult to move, uh, right? Uh, there, there could be like three or four reasons and the top one of them is the inheritance, right? So uh, we take a lot of attributes from the parent side. For example, it could be settings, it could be documents, it could be requirements, categories. These are directly inherited from the parent side, which the location is associated with. When moving to a new site, uh, we have to make a decision whether we need to take this out or is it okay to keep them as is and just take it from the new site, right? So there's, there's always an option to think of, of uh, the site attributes, right? And the other one is associated personal details, right? Uh, so each location, though you have a personal at a site level, you associate a personal at a location level as well. So whenever you send the slot request or whenever you assign a placement to a particular CI, right? Uh, it could be at a location level. So when you want to move this particular location to a different site, how do you manage personally? Do you want to keep the association as is? Do you want to recreate them or do you want to remove them altogether, right? So again, multiple options are there here and it could be dependent on the use case. And then you have slots and placement details. So it could be past, it could be ongoing, it could be in future, right? So what you want to do, like you, you want to keep it as is in the previous as a copy uh, or just handle freshly everything, whatever is ongoing in the future in the newly created location, a different site, right? So some of these things are making, uh, it's, it's quite difficult to move a location, right? And also there's one more bucket, the last one, there are location specific details like communications, interventions, assessment, etc. These are not specific. These are very specific to the locations. Uh, these have nothing to do with the sites as such. But still, uh, when moving certain things, we, we, we do have to give a uh, thought on this one, right? Okay, um, I just want to take a pause here uh, and, and uh, just want to hear from some of you guys uh, or take up this poll question now. Uh, what's the most absurd scenario in moving a location uh, as far as I mean, ER use cases are concerned. Is it a bigger site acquiring uh, single or multiple locations of another site or acquiring another site with all its child locations, two or more sites merging to operate as one or errors when setting up a location on site data? All right, folks, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. You should have those questions showing up on a pop-up for you shortly. Go ahead and... Uh, Put in your votes. We're going to give it a few seconds here um, and see uh, once we have all of your responses, we'll go ahead and uh, close that up in a second. All right, we have about 70% of the votes in. Um, I'm gonna give it just a few more seconds here. I'll give it about, I think, 20 more seconds just to see if we can get a higher response here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll now, folks, uh, and I will share those results here with you all. And let me know, Harsha, if you can see that okay, but we should be seeing the results of um, that first question. Yeah, if, if anyone wants to have a comment or a something, uh, add a comment or a something, feel free to raise your hand. And maybe when you were looking at this question, uh, maybe there is another option that maybe is not listed here and you'd like to speak on that. That would also be a good um, thing to discuss as well. Okay, I am not seeing any questions or hands yeah. raised. All right. Uh, I think um, so. Yeah. So the reason why we want to know this is we want to understand how should we best design this um, feature within Prism. We do understand that there is a need to move locations, but um, we have been struggling to understand. Do you want us to just 
take all locations from under a site and move it to another site or selectively let you move locations one at a time. Um, and how, when a, when a location moves from one site to the other, what happens to all the requirements and the documents that the students have to complete, um, et cetera. So uh, Harsha is going to present a few options um, and the path that we are uh, thinking from our side, and then we can do another poll um, later, Rocio, to get a better understanding. But at least this initial feedback helps. Um, which is what leads to location change. And so let's go back over to Harsha and look at the options we are recommending. Thanks, Arti. Yeah. So continuing on, um, so the current mechanism we have, right? Uh, so whenever we do get such a request, uh, what we suggest is to make the current location as inactive, create a brand new location under the acquiring sites with, with all the details again all over. Uh, and then schools have to rework on the location attributes in the newly created uh, or newly added location. For example, the settings, requirements, documents they have to add. It's 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 like you are creating a brand new from scratch, right? And move any or recreate any future slots and placements also. So you're keeping the old one as is, just making it as inactive. There's a copy of the data exist, um, but any future slots, any placements you want to create it on the own. So it's like the data has been distributed into two locations. So this might work with few schools, uh, or it may not. It may not work with a uh, few schools, right? So th this is where uh, we want to uh, productize this one or give a better um, option to handle these scenarios. So our recommended approach, at least to start with, we plan to provide a functionality to move a single location to a different site. I know like uh, we do have other options, uh, other use cases where to move all the locations, multiple locations, at least to start off with uh, and see if this approach works right. So we do want to move a single location from one site to another. Uh, something like within the location professional details, there could be a quick button or a quick option to move a location, right? Uh, and then you could choose one of the site from the existing list you have, uh, the list of site repository we have in the system, and then we can move it to that, right? Now, uh, a question here, right? When we uh, move a location to a new site, right? Do you want to keep all the old data? Uh, do you want to make sure that everything is moved to the uh, new location, right? Or do you want to keep uh, the older copy as is? Uh, what What is the best option that would work for you? Uh, just to take an example here, we are moving uh, a location L2 from site one to site two, okay? Now, one of the option is like we move entire L2 location from site one to site two with all its details. There is no reference. There is no copy of the data in site one. Now site one will have just only one location, right? Uh, and that's one of the option. The other one is we want to keep some data or, or we want to keep a copy of that for future reference in L2, right? Uh, in, 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 in site one itself, you have both L1 and L2. And in site two also, you want to keep L2 and L3, right? So this is, uh, again, we, we want to hear from you people like what, what is the most uh, widely accepted uh, scenario here. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll so you can go ahead and answer uh, that question there. Oh. <laughs> So far, it is looking like um, everyone is voting yes so far, but we shall see. All right, folks. Um, it looks like we have a, a, about an 80% of you have already voted. So we're going to go ahead and close the poll here um, and share those results with you. It looks like everyone um, would like to... Um, bring along the uh, old data of that location um, when moved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. Um, I think this this validates our, our uh, hypothesis. It's, we were also thinking on the same line, like uh, we do want to keep the data um, in the site too and, and not to keep anything in, in the previous site, right? So uh, moving on. So here uh, is, is what we think about some of the entities. Uh, if we 
categorize the data that is associated with location into buckets, right? Um, there could be location specific attributes, which include the basic info, any nodes, housing, parking information, communications, interventions, and evaluations. As I spoke about this earlier, like it's nothing related to the site. These things you can just move it uh, to the new location that you want to create, right? There's no point of uh, keep, I mean, uh, thinking about the site and all, right? And then you have some old site inherited attributes. Um, from the previous site, you might have some settings inherited categories, documents, requirements, or any requirement uploads that the student has to do at a site specific level, right? Now, these may not be relevant to the new site, right? Or anyway, when you move a location from previous site to the new site, the new site's requirements or, or attributes, you can inherit there, right? So straight away, we think that this shouldn't be moved at all with the new location, when you're moving a location, right? It's, it's always the new site gonna take priority than the old site. And then we have personal association with location, right? Um, this is a little tricky, tricky part because you're gonna add personal at a site level. In the previous site, uh, you, you, you have added certain personals, right? And you have associated with them with the locations. Now, these persons are involved in the slots, placements, and all. When we want to move, we definitely want to keep the association, right? We are not creating these personal in the new site, right? We just retaining the association. Today, because you, you can associate a person from one site to uh, a location of a different site, that association is possible, right? So if you keep the association of the slot data and the placement data, that will work perfectly there. Or if you feel that this this association shouldn't be there, then it might cause issues in the slots and placement. Or if you feel that we have to recreate them in the new slot, even that can be done. But that will that may not go well with the existing data, right? So what we recommend is to keep the association as is. No need to re, uh, recreate these folks in the newly added location or in the newly I mean the site which the location has been moved. And then, then the last bucket, the slots and placement, it, it could have the offered slot details and the placement details. Again, like the timeline can be past, ongoing, and future, right? So we recommend move all the slots and all the placement to the new location so that you just have one source of truth or one place to refer to when it comes to slots, placement, details, right? So th this is what the our, our recommended approach. Uh, Yash and Aarti, probably, do you want to add anything further on this one? Yeah, yeah. So I think Harsha, if you can, can you pull up uh, our our screen and then we can show that okay, these are the things that we are thinking we should directly move, and these are the things that we uh, we may not move. Right? Especially, I think we should yeah. discuss more on the second second part, which we are saying that we'll not move everything. Yeah. Right. So maybe you can open a location, and then we can we can show what are the things that are stored at a location level, right? So this is again, this is our sample, uh, our internal school that we have created, right, for exact. And as you can see, this shows, this is, we have entered, Abundant Health is the name of the site and Abundant Ambulatory Care is the name of the location, right? So let's say our goal is that we want to move this location, Abundant Ambulatory Care, to a different site other than Abundant Health, right? So these are the, so what we have done is we have thought about each of these attributes which are, which are mapped or which are, which are associated with this location. And then we have thought, okay, whether we, it, should, it it makes sense to move this or not, right? So what we said as what, what we said is that all these information, right? So you can maybe just show that, right? Like everything, let's say the address, location, area, website, all these other information we will move, right? On the left hand menu, you can see uh, about personal yeah. communication slots, placements, intervention, assessment, and location evaluation, right? So what we are saying is about I think we'll talk about a little more detail a little a little later. But let, if you see, let's say slots, placements, interventions, assessments, location, evaluations, all and communication, right? All these things we are saying we completely move to the new place as well, right? Because all of these will have some location specific information and in that we don't need to keep an older copy as uh, most of you, I mean, all of you already voted. So all these are straightforward and we will we plan to move them to the new site. I mean, when I mean, this entire location will be moved and all this data will also be moved along with it. For personal, like Harsha said, the personal associations we will retain, right? So even when the location is moved, all these people that you see, uh, they will continue to see, they, they will continue to show up even when this location is moved to a new location, uh, sorry, a new, new site. 
So because we are going to retain these associations, we are going to retain the fact that KC Wright, the person that you see here, is associated to this location called ambulatory abundant ambulatory care. Right. So we will retain these associations. So practically nothing changes. The only thing uh, which is slightly different is that today KC Wright is also added as a personnel at abundant health site level. Now, when you move this location to a new site, that time this KC Wright person will not show up as a personnel at that new site because we are not moving the entire person from this site to that site, but we are simply moving the association so that person is continues to remain at this site because this person might also be associated to some other locations because that is also we, we discussed in the first poll, right? That, that is also a use case that we might not want to move all locations, right? We might want to just move a few locations. So it's possible that KC Wright is working with some other locations of this site, right? So we we are thinking that we should not just move the entire person from this place to the other site or we should not just create a copy of this person to other site, but we simply keep the person there, but we retain the association, right? So again, we, later we'll open up for more questions or comments on this topic, but for now we are just talking about how we are thinking about this and we believe that this uh, should work, right? So this we just talked about personal and then coming to about section, I think this is where we want to talk about some of the things which are coming from the site, right? So Harsha, if you can scroll down, from, uh, starting from setting, we can uh, talk about these things, right? So these settings, categories of the location, uh, then some documents at the location, the requirements at the location. These are some of the things uh, which, I mean, current, the, currently the system is designed in this way, that these are some of the things which can be added at site level also, and they will be automatically inherited at the location. And you can also add something specific at the location as well, right? So maybe let, let's take an example of a setting, Asha. Uh, so if you see there are four settings, you can see, I mean, you can total see six settings, right? Which are added at this location, right? So, and there are two sections you can see that inherited from site and location settings. So this means that acute care, home health, outpatient and wellness. These are the four settings which are added at the site level, abundant health, right? And then, uh, if if you as school feel that okay this location uh, these are the settings that the all the location of the site uh, should carry but maybe this specific location ambulatory care it also caters to rehab and subacute settings so that's why you have manually added these two settings at that location as well right so these the upper four these four are inherited from, inherited from site and the lower two that you see rehab and subacute those are added at the location right so what we are recommending is that when you move this location from this site to a different site we will only move the location specific things, right? So the settings, categories, all the other things. So if we just talk about settings, we will only move rehab and subacute to the new place. The ones which are inherited from site, which were which were he applicable here when this location was part of this site, they will not carry forward to the new site because that new site will itself also have its own set of settings. So when this location is moved to a new site, those those settings of that new site will apply to that lo this location plus these location specific setting, right? So it is possible that the same four uh, settings which are inherited from si this site are also present in the new site. So then in that case, nothing changes and those will also be inherited for that location when it when it is part of the new site. But the movement will only happen for the location settings. The inheritance will continue, but instead of this site, it will be the new site. And these will not continue to be associated with this location right so I, I hope that is clear and we, we we will be happy to take any questions on this if anyone has any questions you can raise hands but this is our thought process on that second bucket that harsha was showing in his presentation so maybe now we can go back to the presentation harsha and now we, we can tie it back uh, to these screens right so what we are saying so the, we are thinking about these in these four buckets right so all the attributes which are location specific in the first box that you see the basic information notes housing parking information communication intervention assessment location evaluation and even these location specific settings or categories or requirements those things we will move as is the old site inherited attributes those we will not move because those now will come from the new site so these things we are saying that okay we don't need to apply this uh, these attributes we don't need to carry this forward in the new site because they will come now from the new site the personal association like we discussed we will retain the associations the personnel can remain in the older site, but the association will be retained. So practically, those persons can be added as you know contacts during placements or by by get, get, getting slots, etc. 
so that we will keep and the last part that you see uh, the slots and placements that also as we discussed all the along with all the older data that also we will move to the new location right so this is this is how we are thinking about this and uh, this is where uh, we would really welcome any comments questions uh, feedbacks or any concerns that you see or some use cases if, if they are not getting catered to uh, and we would like to hear more from you whether you think this will work or uh, yeah i mean the questions you can see we want to have an open discussion if you have any questions or any feedback or concerns please feel free to raise your hand and uh, let us know so we can have a, a discussion on that or we can understand your viewpoint all right, folks. Um, I do have a comment here first from Dane, uh, just letting us know that um, his big priority is to ensure that location-specific documents do come over when we are moving the location because um, the specific comment said, we have very location-specific documents that would need to be retained even when the location moves under a new site. Um, so that was um, one of the... Um, the feedbacks that we received in the com in the questions box. We also have Kathy who has raised her hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Kathy. Feel free to unmute yourself on your end, and you, we should be able to hear you. Kathy, let us know if you're able to. Um, I, I can see your mic is unmuted, but I do not hear you yet. Okay, I'll give Kathy just a second to um, see if. Um, Maybe her mic isn't working, um, but I do have another comment um, from William that says, oh, it's, um, it says Kathy um, is not able to get her mic to work. I'm so sorry about that, Kathy. Um, I'm not sure how we would go about fixing that. Um, but if you do have a comment, feel free to drop that in the questions box. Um, here we have a comment from William. Uh, like the standard work is shown, but of course there is tweaking to the move data. Example, personnel email, uh, addresses change, website on about changes, minor but important to know. Okay, so I think uh, uh, while we get more questions, uh, the first comment was about the location specific uh, documents, right, or requirements. So I think as we discussed, right, we do intend to move all the location specific information uh, along with the movement of location, right? So we uh, we have considered and that will be moved, right? So we will we will retain all that location specific information. And the other comment was about making uh, having to make some tweaks. I mean, we understand that after the location movement, there might be some tweaks required, right? So if, what we want to do is we want to give a feature or functionality in which you can just just with very few clicks you can you are able to move this location then you can always go inside that location review the information that has moved over make some tweaks if anything is going to change all of that uh, you are able to do right so we will uh, i mean of course all of that will be allowed uh, let's say changing of website etc all of that is very easy to do with regards to the email id of the personnel i think there we might have to do some more thinking because the person like we described the person is sitting at an older site right so if if that personnel is going to have a new email id uh maybe a better idea would be to create that person add that person also uh in the new site with their new email id and then associate them to that new location and maybe remove that older association with this new location if that is not valid anymore right so those kind of tweaks if if required can be done and will be allowed right because today also you can make any kind of edits on the location right so those kind of things you will be able to do but the movement part we want to make it very easy uh, and streamlined uh, so that's what we are focusing on awesome i do have another uh, question here so kathy was not Sorry. able to yes, oh yes before we move to the next question yes just on this it almost seems like when we are moving a location it might make sense to ask the question which of the associated people they would like us to recreate in the new site and then we can just recreate them in the new site yeah yeah we can definitely consider that so in in the workflow we can consider asking certain questions right what we have showed is what we think we should do by default but then wherever we want to give more control or wherever the answer to the question is like it depends 
and there, in some use cases i might want to copy this over in some use cases i may not want to copy wherever we have those kind of things we we might want to give power uh, to the user or to the to the school admin or the person who is moving that okay they have to they can decide that okay i want to move this over i want to recreate this etc right so we we have to identify those points and that's why we i mean this this is useful common that if for person if we think that is a uh, that can be a common use case then we we should definitely consider asking that kind of a question and then allowing them to maybe recreate or uh, recreate that person uh, in the that new, is, that in the is new a very uh, good comment that the email address will change sometimes if it's an office phone number that might change and things like that so just leave leave the person behind and recreate them but you give them the option to say which of the people they want to recreate because maybe not everybody is moving with the location right. or something like that so we don't of course we don't delete them from the existing site because they may have other associations but we recreate them in the new site um and then the other thing that was uh, that just came up as we were talking about this is maybe in the product we need a separate functionality that says move this person so just like right now we are thinking about move this location we may want to over time have a, add a functionality that says move this person right all right and this was uh, more of a question but we did have um Kathy uh put that in the questions box we have um in the previous version we entered sites first then attached them to the parent site so that they were easier to move in this version do we have to add a site through the parent site and Harsha Yash I don't know if you want to answer that I'll answer that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, we do have to move the in the new version. Uh, we do want everyone to first create the parent site, uh, and then within that parent site, add the location. That just makes the inheritance part a lot easier to manage and think through. Also, um, we we know that every site, even if it's a single site is going i mean a single location the recommendation is to create a site and to add that location inside of that site so that tomorrow let's say they add a new location they acquire a new location something changes you don't have to go back and reshuffle things and say oh this was this used to be a location now it's a site and things like that so we want to uh, offer that uh, follow that two step process all the time a site is where the legal entity is it's the corporate office and then it can have just one location which is the same as the parent site uh, address or it could have one or more locations and then later you can add location so once it may seem odd at first but that's the uh, thought process we want everyone to kind of adopt when they're using the setup in exact is parent site always comes first so you've always create the site you set it up with anything and everything you want every location in it to inherit and then you start adding locations so whatever you have added at the site will automatically populate down and then that's just a good way to think through this so the short answer is yes you have to first add the site and then add a location the only thing to note is we've made it relatively easy to create that location that kind of mimics the site address because when you are adding a new site you do have a checkbox that says also create this as a location and if you do that then it adds it as a location so you don't have to do two step process if you have a site with just a singular location you add all the details at the site level check the box it will create the back end location for you um so it so that's the reason why it always goes site first location second okay aharsha uh, yes if you guys want to add anything please feel free i think you've, you've covered it all happy yeah we we do want to have a site one parent site even if there's only one child location only one location or site itself and uh, we can just use that option whenever we create a site uh, so that it it can create a child location as well uh 
Uh, we have another uh, comment or question from Lynn. Uh, will we be able to move a location listed as a site to another site as a location? Uh, no, I think if I think it, it, it's they want to move a site as a location under different fund, right? Uh, I think th that we need to think through. Um, if they have a same site as a location, right? If it's a singular location, then that's that can be done with the recommended approach we have. If we want to change a site as a location uh, or a location as a site, um, that that we have to think through a bit. Asha, but uh, the site will have a location inside it, right? So yes, yes, it is. So the question yes. really is. What about an acquisition or something where all the locations of the site are moving? Um, and if it's just two, three locations, you can move them one at a time. But if all the locations are moving, you may want a slightly different interface. Different so that, yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe we allow for one moving, moving one location at a time. And we also give a button that says move the entire set together. Got it. Yeah. Yes, so sir. how we are thinking about this, uh, how we are thinking about this, Arti, right? That we start with movement of one location, right? So even if they want to move all locations, it is, it is, they can do it. Uh, it's just that they have to do it one location at a time, right? Then we enhance it further to allow it, allow change the interface such that they can select multiple locations and just do the movement. And then we further extend it to say that okay, the entire site also we want to just acquire the entire site, so the entire site has to be moved under a different site so all the location of the current site has to be have to be moved in a different site because in that last step uh, we also have to consider what kind of site attributes they want to move to the new site right so if we think about like step by step then was first the smallest unit that we can think about is just moving one location then we can extend it further to moving of multiple locations just uh, enhance the interface so that multiple locations can also be moved in one go and then the entire site can also be moved. So that's how we are thinking about it. So gradually, how we can build this. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the question, the question, yeah, sorry, please continue. That, that's fine, except that if the site has like 100, 200 locations, and it's just going to be really tedious. So um, we can take it in steps, but we'll eventually have to give the option for all locations. We have a question from um, Kathy here. Um, her question or comment is, uh, we had added an independent site that was set up. Within a month, they were bought out by a corporation. I cannot figure out how to move them to the corporate parent. OK, so I think uh, then the independent site was set up. Was it added also as a location, or was it a standalone site? Uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm using prism terminology here. So when I say standard site, I mean the site and not the location. Okay, standalone site. So I believe then, then it had no locations within it, right? So ideally, what we recommend is that it, you, if if it is a standalone site, you always create a child location. Uh, I mean, that checkbox that we were talking about, that you have that location created and all the activities are done at a location level, right? So had, had that been done, then the location movement, what we are talking about today, that will enable you to move that location to a different uh, corporation, which is a parent corporation, right? Even for a single location site, we do recommend that you create, take check, you know, consider that checkbox and just create a lo child location also uh, under that site, rather than just keeping the site and not creating any locations. And, and, and just I as a disclaimer, we today don't have the ability to move a location. This is why we are doing this discussion, so we can figure out yeah. what are all the things that need to be in place that will satisfy this support tickets that people are sending in where they are making a request. So today, if you want to move a location, you just have to send in a support ticket, and the support team will 
try to work behind the scene to make it work. Once the product team is able to release this feature and functionality to the front end, you will be able to move it yourself. And that's why we are doing this discussion so we can collect all the use cases and what people prefer and what would work for them, what would not work for them, et cetera. So we are, we are a few months away from you all being able to do this independently. But that's it's work in progress right now. We have another question from Donna. Uh, for the single location or site, uh, the site would move with the location? No, it's the location, uh, at least to start off with, as, as answered in previous question, right? If a single site has a single location, um, it's only the location will be moved to start off with and, and later when we um, enhance this functionality to move site with all its location or most two or, two or three sites, um, that's when they would be able to do. Okay, so Harsha and Yash, if you have any additional questions, let's post it, otherwise let's move to the next topic. We do have um, a follow-up question or comment from Donna. We wouldn't need a site listed without a location. I think she means speaking from if she were to move that single location to a different site, then she's left over with a site that doesn't have any location. Right, right. So, so to answer that, Donna, so what we are thinking that initially we'll start with just ability to move the location, right, from Again, this kind of a request, if you have today, you can always raise a support ticket and we can help you uh, just move your location and then delete that existing site, all of it, right? But if once we have the feature, we are, we are going to start with ability to move a location from one side to another, right? So in that case, let's say you move a location, then you have a, a site, then the older site will be just listed without any location, right? You can simply delete that site or in anything of that site that you wanted to keep and transfer to that new site or the acquiring site, you can just always enter that data. So you might want to, might have to do that uh, a little bit of work there, and then you can delete that older site, right? But eventually we'll also enhance this later to even allow you to entirely move the site under a different site and we'll have a workflow for it. So you will be able to say, okay, this entire site with all of its location, we want to move to, move to this different site, which is let's say now a bigger corporate and now that is acquiring this site. So you will be able to do that and uh, we will have a step-by-step process in which you able to you will be able to define the, okay, what all you want to move and what all locations you want i mean all the locations will also be moved right so we will have that also but for the time being the first step we are thinking is of location movement and as of now if you have any such need like arti said you can always raise a support ticket and we can help you out all right um Roshu, do we see any questions or comments or is the can move uh, to the no we are all set I'm, I'm not seeing any hands raised um, or any additional uh, questions or comments okay let's move on to the next one then yeah in the next 15 minutes we're going to talk about contract management uh what are the some recent changes that we have done um right so uh as we know that in the con today, if you want to add any contracts, you have to come to the individual site um, and, and then um, you, 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 you click on this particular plus button, right? And then you can add a contract. So it's tightly coupled with a site. In, in order to add a contract, you, you have to come inside a site and then um, add a contract, right? Now, we, we did have some use cases or some of the requirements where a particular contract may be associated with multiple sites, it may, it may not be one particular site itself, right? Um, so the recent past, we, we, added, we added an enhancement where you can link a contract to multiple sites, right? Just to visualize this better, let me just uh, open this with, uh, presentation. So let's say uh, there's a site one, earlier what we had was like, you can associate it with multiple contracts, contract one, contract two, contract three, right? This this was uh, doable earlier. Now, in addition to this particular uh, enhancement uh, or this particular functionality which we had, you can also now associate a contract with multiple sites. For, that, for example, let's say you initially added contract one in site one, right? And now you want to add that the same contract with another sites which are there in the group or, or in, in your system, let's say site two or site three. All you have to do is like go to that site and, and then go to the contract section and, and then just you can add it, right? And 
soon we're going to have a specific page for contracts itself now today if you want to access contract as i said earlier you have to come in within a particular site and then only you can access it right soon contracts can have its own independent page or it's an independent entity it can act and you can always use this with multiple sites um and, and the locations as well so this this is an option um link contracts when you actually click on this one right you want to see all the contracts um which are associated in the system right so now what we are making is linking abundant health site with some of the other contracts which exist which may be related to um, in which which are related to any of the sites right so and when you go inside that particular um uh, the other contract other site you can also see the same the contract names what are they associated with or the linked ones um and how do you differentiate you would get a, a link or, or or a check mark or something like this this means that this contract is not only associated with the current site you are in but also with some of the other sites right so uh, this was one of the recent announcement um, uh, that has been done uh, we we want to hear more on this one like uh, does this support your use cases or does this make any changes uh, yeah i think we can we can discuss this Yash and and Arti, do you want to add anything on top of it? Yeah. So one of the bigger universities that we signed up uh, made uh, made an ask for this enhancement because what they wanted to do is we already have a two level hierarchy. You set up a site, and within a site, you set up locations. However, sometimes you have complex medical healthcare networks and. groups and they don't always fit within a two level hierarchy so let's say there is usc medical network it's a big network it has lots of hospitals lots of departments lots of units within the hospitals etc and so just a two level hierarchy would not work and so what they wanted to do is every hospital needed to be a site so then within that they would add all the units for that hospital and all clinics needed to be separate but then they were all being covered by the same physician group contract or the same site contract and so having the contract tied one on one with the site was was making it very difficult for them to organize their sites and location the way they would want to interact with them and and then still be able to share the contract across these multiple hospitals that fall under the same umbrella and so that this is now what we have done we broke the tight coupling between one site to one look contract so you don't have to do duplicate work of adding that same contract for each site but now if a two level hierarchy a site and a location setup doesn't work for you you can create multiple sites and link all of those sites to the same contract so you're not duplicating contracts you're not creating garbage data in the system and you're efficiently able to set up the hierarchy we know medical centers can be very complex to navigate and so that's one example another example is uh, groups like ati or groups like select where they have multiple multiple locations within the whole united states and in some cases they do like to operate through regions so they have the northeast region and the west region and the south region and stuff like that so if you wanted to make sites with all those different regions and then still have all those sites be you wanted to set all those sites sites to be using the same contract you can now do that so these are the two very common use cases you may have other use cases why a two level hierarchy doesn't work for you so separating out the contract just gives you more flexibility but let's let's hear if that makes sense to everyone so harsha do we have a poll for that yeah we do have All right folks, I'm going to go ahead and open up our last poll of the day. Um so feel free to go ahead and um answer that question there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll since it looks like everyone um our our votes here have um climbed up here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and share those results with you. And it looks like um 
everyone is benefiting from this um, feature here. That's awesome. I love to hear that. The tech team found, uh, like, got this requirement. They worked on it, and it's a win for everybody. This is great. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I do want to add that, uh, I mean, thanks for this feedback. What we do plan to do in future is that uh, now that you will have the ability to link the contracts to multiple sites, we will have a dedicated page where you will be able to see all the contracts, right? Not just, uh, I mean, not just anchored through a site, but just contact itself as an anchor. You'll be able to see all the contracts. You'll be able to also have a dedicated contract profile page where you will be able to go in and see that, okay, this contract is associated with which all sites if they are if they are associated with multiple sites, right? And all the attributes of a contract, like contract start date, end date, status, etc., all of them you'll be able to see at one place, one one contract at a time. And you don't have to always go inside a site and then uh, look at that contract, right? So though that that extension we will we we do plan to do, so that will also help you manage it even better. But yeah, I think the, this the the poll helps us understand that yeah, what we are doing is in the right direction. All right. Do we have any comments or anything to add from anyone here? Uh, I'm not seeing any uh, questions or comments here, but I'm just going to check to see if anybody would like to um, add any feedback. I don't see any hands raised either. Well, okay. There's... So over the summer, there is going to be a new functionality that we are going to roll out where at a university level, you will be able to uh, look at all contracts across all the departments, et cetera, in one place. So if, it, if you at your university, multiple departments are using the product, today you, can, you don't have that centralized view, but that is something that is coming um, in summer this year. And so that will be an added advantage and an added view for all uh, universities with multiple departments using PRISM. All right, if there are no other questions, um, Rocio, we can close the webinar. This was very helpful, gives us the validation that the work that we have already done on contracts is very useful and gives us some ideas about how we should approach the location-based uh, location movement. Um, please watch out for release notes um, so you know when this thing gets released, but over the next couple of months is when you will see this um, in production. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And that brings us to the end of this webinar. If you have a few minutes, we'd love to hear from you. Stick around once this webinar ends for a short survey to let us know how we're doing, what can be improved, and any additional topics you'd like to see in the future. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.